morning. I'm Sasha Dorje Meyerwitz back again with the continued update on this week's work. I'm standing here on the third floor of veranda of the temple. You can see we're pretty high up. So this is where a lot of the action is going to take place later in the week. They're going to be finishing the uh, second floor of veranda roof uh, in the next couple of days just to the point where they can build up on it and extend to create an extended platform here. So they're going to add four feet to the veranda that I'm standing on out this way. And um, on that four feet, they'll have an ample room to put scaffolding. And then from there, the, the, the crew will stand and work, and the crane will bring up the uh, large pieces of wood uh, that form the third floor roof. We're now going to go to uh, the job Lee Carpenter, Nicholas Carter, and he's going to talk about a little bit more specifically what the third floor roof is made of. Good morning. Here we are standing in the main shrine room of the Sondo Palri. Uh, temple and what we're looking at right here is a model of the third floor roof um, We built this in order to give us um, Some clarity and understanding of exactly what we were working with and it was very very helpful and, and revealing in a lot of ways um, This is a scale model and um, If you look around the shrine room here, you'll see all the different pieces that are mocked up here. We have um, this is our ridge beam, which is a uh, which is right here, and this is a PSL that spans the length of the building uh, to support all of these other uh, rafters that will connect into it. Um, we also have what uh, these four beams right here, which are the the hips. Uh, which you can see in the model. We call these the hip rafters, which come out on a 45 degree angle to support these uh, curved blue lamps um, for, that uh, will serve as the fascia. So these are our um, curved blue lamps, which um, will be the fascia of the roof, the outer perimeter of the roof. And I don't know if you can see from that angle, but maybe over from here, you can see that these are curved. And so the way these are made is they take a regular two by and they put them in a, in a press, in a machine that actually curves them and they glue them together. Um, the, most of Japanese architecture is all about balance and there's, uh, the formula is more proportional than anything else. So, in order to get the curve and the, the sort of Japanese aesthetic that we wanted, you basically take the width of the beam, uh, which in this case I, I believe is about seven and a half inches, and where you start your curve, at the point you start your curve, you actually curve it, so from this point, to this point, if you were able to measure, you would have a seven and a half inch difference. So you curve the beam the same thickness of the beam. So you rise it, if it's a seven and a half inch beam, you rise the curve up seven and a half inches. You can see these here are the common rafters, uh, what we call common rafters. And we have, um, we've had a local uh, welder uh, make for us um, brackets that we're going to use to fasten the um, curved glue lamps to the common rafters that gives us our structural support and uh, as you can see we have a very talented local welder um, produces very beautiful products for us so that's it for this morning and I hope you're enjoying please stay tuned we're going to be raising this uh, roof section in about a week.